Building Rapport and Trust with Clients Mandated Counseling with Amy Rubin. Hi, I'm Amy Rubin. I'm a counselor in Nova Scotia. So this segment is about the situation that sometimes happens when a person is mandated to attend counseling. So once you're a counselor, you might get some people who have been told that they can go and seek counseling as an alternative to going to prison, as a condition to getting access to see their children. You might also get people who have had uh, an interpersonal issue with somebody close to them who has told them that if they don't get counseling, they're going to be cut off from their family, they're going to be kicked out of the house. Um, so I consider anyone to be mandated if there's been some external reason why they're seeking counseling and the stakes are pretty high. So when this happens, many people arrive and are willing and and very engaged and happy to be there because they feel very motivated to um, make, make the conditions met. And sometimes they're very grateful and relieved to have counseling as an opportunity. And sometimes not. Sometimes they arrive and they're angry. They might feel a bit hostile towards you. And sometimes in the first little bit of your interaction with them, uh, it can feel it can feel quite aggressive. So I actually haven't had this happen a lot, but it certainly does happen sometimes. And what's most important to remember in these situations is that the person who is arriving is in an enormous power imbalance with you. It could be that you are a person who has a say in whether or not they're going to go to prison, whether or not they're allowed to be with their children, whether or not they're going to stay in an intact family situation, whether or not their spouse is going to stay with them or leave them. So this is scary. And also, when it's the first session, they don't know you yet. You're a complete stranger. And you may understand them well, or you may not. So Usually when someone arrives and they're really quite distressed and it's a situation that could be considered mandated, for me, that's always the starting point. And I believe that it is not only understandable to be, to be angry, anxious, wary, suspicious, but there's a certain amount of wisdom to it and in some way is a healthy boundary there because here is a stranger who's got a pretty important role to play in what's going on in this person's life. Additionally, there's a fair chance that this person has been through some life experiences with people in positions similar to counseling or perceived to be in a position similar to a counselor that may not have been fair and may not have been just. And so to come in with some reservations, it makes a lot of sense. So a great place to start is right there. And to say, you know, to acknowledge it, to say, wow, so, you know, I hear that you've, you've been sent here. I completely understand that this is not somewhere you want to be. And you don't know me yet. So maybe you have some questions for me. I'm sure you're curious about what kind of person I am and whether or not I'm going to be able to help you. So so putting that right out there, uh, that you, you have a sense that it's reasonable to be upset, and that you're willing to meet halfway and be as transparent as possible in the professional relationship, in order to help the person get as much information as they can. Um, if the person's very, very, very upset, I think I've only had to do this once or twice to say, you know what, I I really get it that you're upset right now. And I wonder if maybe today isn't the day to start. Maybe you want to come back. Now you've met me. Now you've seen me. Why don't you go, you know, you can think about it a little bit, see if you've got some questions for me, think about what you feel is really important for me to know, because, you know, I'm I'm trying to listen to you and I'm having a hard time you know, understanding what you're, what you're trying to communicate to me. 
might be one example if that's appropriate. Sometimes you can also give the person a little bit more time, offer them a glass of water, uh, anything to, to try to de-escalate the situation. So you can kind of see, see what works. But basically the, the message is that I'm not going to unnecessarily put you in a situation where you don't have a lot of options. I'm here to listen to you. And the other thing that I would say to that is that usually when that happens, very quickly after that, the person does kind of check themselves and start telling the story. And in more cases than not, I receive an apology very shortly after that. And usually at some point during the session, as they're they're kind of sharing the story of how they've come to be here, you know, maybe some difficult experiences they've had in the past. And if for some reason it doesn't quite get to that point, which has only happened once or twice in the years that I've been counseling, then what I would do is at the end of the session, when hopefully things are are a little bit more on track, just before the person leaves, I say, you know, I'm I'm really glad you came. I'm excited about the work that we can do together. And I also know that you were really upset when you came in. I understand that but I can't allow myself to be talked to like that. So that can't happen again. So creating that boundary, not right in the height when everyone's at their most escalated, but making sure that they don't leave without it being addressed. And again, usually the apology is spontaneous and it comes sooner than that. And if not, once you get to that point, I've never had a person who, who didn't understand that. And what often surprised me is that the clients who came in at the center that I was working at, at that center we called, we called the people who were arriving clients, uh, the ones who were often very upset at the beginning were frequently people who I developed the best working relationship with. So... I encourage you to go into these situations with an open mind that anything can happen and an understanding that distress is somewhat common and absolutely understandable and it doesn't have to be a roadblock to you forming a good therapeutic relationship with a person.